Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to interpret decisions in hypothesis testing. So remember that when you are hypothesis testing, there are only two decisions that you can make. You can either make the decision to reject the null hypothesis or you can fail to reject the null hypothesis. Those are the only two decisions that you can arrive at when you are finished with your hypothesis test. For every hypothesis test, you will have a claim. Your claim can either be about the null hypothesis or your claim can be about the alternative. And depending upon whether your claim is about the null or whether your claim is about the alternative, it does change your wording that you use when you are interpreting your decision. Your claim will be about the null hypothesis if it is an equality statement, so something like equals or is greater than or equal to, at least, anything like that. The claim is going to be about the alternative anytime it contains an inequality statement like less than, more than, not equal to, etc. Okay, so the way that you start your sentence is if you reject the null hypothesis and your claim is about the null hypothesis, then you will say there is enough evidence to reject the claim. So when the claim is about the null hypothesis, you always use um, the word reject. So you will always use the word reject. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis, then you will say there is not enough evidence to reject. So this time you would say not. If your claim is about the alternative, then you're going to say there is enough evidence to support. So you use the word support instead of reject. And if the claim is about the alternative hypothesis and you fail to reject the null, then there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So anytime you fail to reject, you use the word not. Anytime your claim is about the null, you use the word reject. And anytime the claim is about the alternative, you use the word support. So let's do a couple of examples so you can see this in action. So for the first one, it says, how should you interpret the decision if you reject the null hypothesis? And then how should you interpret if you fail to reject the null hypothesis? So our claim is that a company advertises that the mean life of its refrigerator is 17 years. So I advise with this is to at least set up the null and the alternative so you know what you're talking about. So for this one, since it is 17 and we're using the word mean, we would use the symbol mu equals 17. So since this is a statement of equality, we would put it in the null hypothesis and the alternative would be the mu is not 17. So we would establish that this one is our claim and the reason this is our claim is because it is an equality statement. Okay, so we would come up to this chart up here. Our claim is about the null hypothesis, so we're going to use the word reject and we're going to do both of these just so that you can see them both written out. Okay, so the first one, um, and I'm just going to label this as 1 and this is 2. So for 1, if we interpret the decision, if we reject the null hypothesis, we're rejecting this statement right here. So we're saying there is enough evidence to reject that the mean life of the refrigerator. And it's always important to put the context in here. Um, write it as if you're explaining it to your grandmother so that she knows what you're talking about. So there is enough evidence to reject that the mean life of the refrigerator is 17 years. So for this one, we use the word reject because our claim was about the null. So for the second one, how should you interpret if you fail to reject? We would say there is not enough evidence because our claim, remember, is about the null. We're not rejecting this. So we would say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. that the mean life of the refrigerator 
is 17 years. Okay, so let's try another example. This time we have a statement of inequality. So this time our claim will be about the alternative. So for this one, when we set up, we always put the null first and the alternative second. It doesn't matter uh, whether your claim is about the null or the alternative. You will always set those up the same way. So a mechanic advertises that the mean wait time for an oil change is less than 15. So mathematically, that's saying that mu is less than 15. This is a statement of inequality, so it would go in the alternative. So the null hypothesis would be the opposite, and that would be greater than or equal to. In some texts, they will always just use equals in the null hypothesis, so if that is what your textbook does, that's fine. Um, both are acceptable. The textbook that I currently teach from counts that as wrong, even though technically it's not. Okay, so our claim this time is about the alternative. So if we went back up to our original chart, we can see that this time our claim is about the alternative, so we're going to use the support. So we're either going to have enough evidence to support the claim, or we do not have enough evidence to support the claim. We never reject or make a decision about the alternative, so if your claim is in the alternative, you're going to be supporting it. So if you want to support something, you want to make sure that you write your claim in a way that it has an inequality statement so that it'll be in the alternative. If you want to be able to reject something, then you want to make sure that you set it up in the wording to where your claim is about the null hypothesis. It's really important that you understand that um, because there is a difference in how you interpret. So for the first one, remember for this one, we are rejecting HO. So we're essentially saying this doesn't appear to be true, so our evidence points towards this one being true. So that's why we say there is enough evidence to support that the mean wait time for an oil change is less than 15 minutes. So this time we do have enough, if we reject the null hypothesis, we have enough evidence to support that the mean wait time for an oil change is less than 15 minutes. And then for the last one, we would just say the only difference is that this time we are failing to reject so this time we're saying that the evidence points towards the null hypothesis being true so we would say there is not enough evidence to support that the mean wait time for an oil change is less than 15 minutes. Okay, um, so just to recap, remember that this chart up here makes it very easy to break down how to interpret your decision. If you are rejecting the null hypothesis, you are either going to have enough evidence to reject or enough evidence to support, depending upon where your claim is. If you fail to reject, then you will not have enough evidence to reject or not have enough evidence to support, depending upon where your claim is. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.